Hey what's up, it's Luke here from BassGorilla.com and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make your sounds bigger in Ableton Wavetable. So let's go inside Ableton and check it out. Now I'm not going to be using any plugins to make this seem bigger. I'm not going to be using saturation or distortion or things after the synth. I'm purely showing you ways to make your sounds seem bigger using what's available inside Ableton Wavetable. So, what we have here is a spectral analyzer spectrum loaded up so that we can see the frequency response of sounds that we create. So if I press a note on my keyboard, you can see here we have a sine wave. All we have is that fundamental frequency. We don't have other harmonics coming through. But if I move the wavetable position towards the saw, then you can see that now there's a lot more harmonics. So tip number one is to use wavetables and positions in wavetables that have a lot of harmonics coming through and that's going to mean that you get a lot more energy occupying the whole frequency spectrum so let's say that on this first oscillator we're just going to use this saw wave and then on the second oscillator what we're going to do is find another sound. Now, I've already pointed out the fact that sine waves and things that seem similar to sine waves are not going to give you a lot of size, a lot of bigness, um, a lot of energy that you can take things away from later on. So with the second oscillator, I would recommend that you go with something that has tons of harmonics and you can see the shape of the wave here. And when you start to see a lot of jagged edges, that's a good sign that it probably has a lot of harmonics in it. So let's just check out oscillator 2 by itself here. Yeah. So if you look here, the shape of this waveform here is not as jagged, it's a lot smoother compared to this. This has a lot more harmonics in it. this one has even more. So by using these kind of wave shapes or waveforms that have lots of jagged edges in them, that's going to create more harmonics in your sound as well. You can see it visually inside wavetable. And when I combine that with the saw, let's just bring the level down here. You can see that that's a lot more big sounding than just a sine wave, right? Next thing we can do is detune. So here you see we have semitones and we have detune in sense, which is a hundredth of a semitone. And so if I just detune this slightly by say two cents, that's going to help to create more perceived size in the sound. Next thing is I'm going to turn off this, um, this low pass filter because I don't want that to take off any of the high frequencies. Just trying to get as much sound coming through as possible. Next thing we can try is with the semitone transpose, if you hold shift and press up on your keyboard, now this is a whole octave above. And we can even swap that around. So we might have this one down here. We might have oscillator one up an octave and see how that sounds. Okay, next thing we can do is use a sub. So if you click on sub here, let's just turn off oscillators one and two. The sub is just a sine wave, but as you raise the tone, that introduces more harmonics to the sound. You can have it one octave below the global transpose, or two octaves below, or at the same transpose. So I'm going to activate oscillators one and two now. And I think when this is playing at minus one octave below the global transpose, that sounds a lot bigger. You're filling out the frequency spectrum with a low sub. You've got a mid bass and you've got a slightly higher oscillator. So you're really filling out that whole frequency spectrum. I'm actually going to bring this down an octave. Okay. 
Next is Unison. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six different Unison modes, and you have to really test them all out to figure out which one you like most for the particular sound you're making. But by adding Unison, or by making use of Unison with a sound, you're having several instances of that same sound be created at the same time, and then the Unison amount is going to detune those different instances of that same sound so that you get a detuning effect and you, you can hear many different voices coming through in the mix. So if we change this to the first one, Classic, it says we have three voices and the amount of detune between those three voices is 30%. So let's see how that sounds. So that makes a huge difference to the sound. That can add a lot more perceived size to your sounds. And I recommend you to use this as, as much as possible when you're trying to create a big sound. Um, you can also play with the number of voices. So this is three. Let's try five. And playing with the amount of detune can make a huge difference as well. Cool, okay, so we've taken a look at Unison, we've taken a look at what sort of wavetables or waveforms to use. We've looked at using the sub to add more energy to your sounds. Now with the filters here, you can see that we have a low pass, a high pass, a band pass, and a notch. Now all of these filters are going to take energy out of your sound, and that might, in most cases, that would make your sound seem further away or smaller than it is because you're taking energy and you're cutting frequencies out of the sound. But with a notch filter, you might be able to find a sweet spot where it does make the sound seem bigger. So let's activate this notch filter, just bring the, bring the resonance up a bit, and I'm gonna scan through the frequency band and see if I find a spot that seems to make the sound appear to be bigger. So I don't want it to be too low because if you cut out those low mids, you really notice a difference in the sound. Let's see how that is compared to not having the nuts. So by moving that notch frequency, you give this perception that the bass is somehow moving. Maybe it's moving towards you and away from you, or maybe it's moving around you in some way. But it gives this feeling that that sound is somehow surrounding you more than if the sound is just not moving at all, right? So, no notch sweeping. And if you were to apply compression, limiting, saturation, distortion after this synth, then you would be able to make that sound a lot bigger as well. And that would help with the overall size. So those are the main ways that you can make uh, sounds appear to be bigger, but there is one other thing that you can do. And that is if you put this into a group, so select the device and press Command G or Control G on Windows. And then here in the chain selector, we have the instance of this one chain. And what we can do is select that click on it and press Command D to duplicate it. So now we have two instances running in parallel and that's instantly gonna double the volume. But if I also detune the second instance of it, then that's gonna help to create even more interesting or even more size in the sound. So we could detune this by a couple of cents up and that is oscillator one, we could detune Oscillator 2 by a few cents up. We could not detune the sub. There isn't a way to do that as far as I can see here. Uh, but we could change the tone of it slightly if we wanted to. And now we have a much bigger sound again. And you can really hear that phasing, that...
cool. So that is another way. And another way still is to change this to be an octave above the original one. So here we have global transpose. If I just press shift and up, now that's up 12 semitones. And now it sounds like this. So without this second instance, but with it, So that's another way you can make things sound bigger. Another way still, if I just bring this back down an octave, I think it sounded better like this. I'm gonna duplicate this instance again. And with the third instance of Wavetable, what I'm gonna do is just change it completely. So I'm gonna solo it. I'm gonna put it up an octave. And I'm gonna create a sort of um, a synth that's gonna sit behind these main bases in the background and that's going to help to fill up some of the higher frequencies in the spectrum to make the overall sound seem to be bigger so fuller so we can just tweak this wavetable position a bit another thing we could do is try and find a range within the wavetable that sounds particularly full or fierce or aggressive. And we could sort of use an LFO or an ADSR envelope to sweep across that area. So if I was to take this range here from about 30% to 45%, then what we could do is just apply an LFO to that. And what I would do to do that is just click into my matrix, click on the parameter that I wanna change. In this case, it's oscillator to position and it appears here. And now I can apply an LFO, for example, to it. Just click here where it says zero and drag up or down. And we can even have, we can even go into that LFO by clicking on it, bring the rate down, change the wavetable position. So now we have some movement in the sound, but we've also found a nice range within the wavetable position where you're accessing a range of those different waveforms that create a sort of aggressive feel relative to other positions in the wavetable. And we can also go into the first oscillator, tweak that wavetable position a bit. Maybe we'll make it more of a square because that might um, contrast nicely with the more saw shaped waveform that we have in oscillator one here. The sub, we could tweak the tone of it. We could even try turning it off um, because we have lower frequencies covered by the other two instances of Wavetable already. So now what we have is this. And if I play that with the other two instances of Wavetable, see how full that sounds? If I turn off this third instance, you're only hearing the basses. But with it on, and we can even lower the volume a bit just to subtly hide it so no one can even notice that it's really there unless they have a very well-trained ear and they can listen very carefully and pick things out. But it's just making the overall sound seem a lot bigger. So that's about it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that that's given you some, some useful tips on how you can make your sounds bigger. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so you get notified about new tutorials that we release on YouTube. And if you're looking to get serious about music production and you want step-by-step -step courses on all kinds of topics music production related, head on over to BassGorilla.com and we hope to see you there soon. Cheers.